So this morning I got a really good question about liposomal glutathione and acetyl glutathione. If you guys haven't heard on my channel, it's really up in the air on as to which one is better. Um, there's this one website that you know wrote up a paper. I will say they are also trying to sell product, um, and so you know it is written in support of the type of glutathione that they are selling. But like it still it still had some good information in there, and um, I wanted to share with you guys and um, you know just see what you think. Basically, in this paper, it was a write-up about um, they sell glutathione, acetyl glutathione, and then a different type of uh, glutathione that is topical. And this is for people with you know serious issues like COPD, liver disease, AIDS, arthritis, Parkinson's. Like you know, these are some serious neurological issues, um, you know, among other things. So they're basically saying that you know definitely go with acetyl because the acetyl group which is attached to the molecule is what protects it from pepidasis. Now pepidasis is basically the process of what breaks down the glutathione and if the glutathione is broken down then obviously you're not getting all the nutrients. So this protects it from pepidasis and allows it to pass through your bloodstream and well not only that but pass through the blood brain barrier. Now for these issues especially if you are taking glutathione for COPD, liver disease, AIDS, um, there's like a list of other diseases that people take glutathione for, but getting it into the brain is extremely important. So I don't want to comp I don't want to completely like discount it that acetyl is the only form of glutathione that allows it to pass through the blood brain barrier, allowing glutathione to get to your brain. Um, obviously, liposomal glutathione, it's still gonna get in your bloodstream. Heck, even taking reduced glutathione, if you're doing um, nebulized or rectal implant, you can still get it into your blood, you know, using one of those two. It's just really interesting. There are other papers, um, you can find them on, I'll have them all listed or the links below, but there are other medical research papers talking about liposomes and how they're used for different medicines, in particular um, neurological uh, medicines that help with different diseases, and how the liposomes do help encapsulate the medicine and get it through the blood-brain barrier. So um, I don't want to completely say that acetyl is the only form of glutathione that can get to your brain. Um, when it comes to a skin journey obviously of all the techniques that I've used um, with taking liposomal um, glutathione and taking reduced glutathione but doing it rectally or with the nebulizer I would say those still worked for me um, as far as my skin goes but as far as which one is better for people who have serious conditions um, you know it's kind of up in the air <laughs> like there actually could be you know a lot of uh, truth I don't feel like uh, the paper that they wrote is misleading or anything. It's just for what we're using glutathione for, I still think uh, liposomal and acetyl are both amazing options, just as reduced glutathione is, as long as you're just not taking it orally, as long as you're taking it in a way that's going to get it to your bloodstream. And the same with IV. Um, and this paper also pointed out, well, with IV, it gets into the blood, but a couple hours after the IV session, um, it, it's inactive. And I'm assuming it goes through a different type of uh, peptidasis as well. But, you know, people who are going through AIDS, who need glutathione, um, and are getting IVs and things like that, I, I don't want to say that IVs don't still get it through the blood brain barrier because why else would they be going through those expensive treatments uh, especially IV treatments take a long time too like you know you're pretty much hooked up for a while so you know I, I don't want to completely I'm gonna link it below so you guys can read it it's only one page it's super it's a super quick read so yeah I don't want to completely like say oh acetyl is the only way to go but I, I will say this for me acetyl I don't have enough experience with it I think I was only on acetyl for maybe one to two months and then I think I uh, I switched to lipo liposomal glutathione so 
obviously you need to be on it like longer so this is where people who have actually been on acetyl for the majority of their journey like you know need to speak up like do you sit do you think it works better than the other uh, glutathione types that you've tried what other um, types of glutathione were you using prior you know and how long were you using them like this is something basically we just need to kind of discuss and I think it definitely is something you have to like test out for yourself to know for certain but uh, I still got results with all of the different types of glutathione that I used. The only difference I would say was some are definitely more con time consuming than others. So when it comes to liposomal glutathione, which is one of the most expensive right behind getting IVs, um, sometimes you're, you're just paying for convenience and just making it quicker and something that's going to fit into your daily routine. Um, when it comes to acetyl, um, Austin also said that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy, you know, the acetylglutathione and take about six pills a day. I'm not sure if he's taking the 200 milligram ones or the uh, 250 ones, but, um, you know, for some people doing six pills a day, especially if it comes in like a count of 30, they can get kind of expensive. So I could see why taking six a day and, you know, you're running out in like five days, why for some people that doesn't work. And then others, it's just cheaper just to get reduced glutathione and take it rectally or take it with the nebulizer or even get the liposomal uh, glutathione and just you know stock up on it and just take two to three thousand milligrams of it um, i will say that's another good thing with both acetyl and liposomal glutathione you don't have to like overdo it you don't have to even if you want to you can like you can do like six thousand milligrams but you could still get results with liposomal or acetyl just by taking maybe around like 3,000 to 4,000 milligrams. It's when you get into the other types of glutathione, the reduced whatnot, that you have to like start like just overdoing it like six to 12,000 milligrams a day. Um, so I hope this was helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you guys are wondering about the blood-brain barrier, basically it's something everyone has and its purpose is just to protect our brain from pathogens that could cause brain infections. Um, meaning that if you were to take a dye and inject it, and this has been proven, this study has been done, you were to take dye and inject it into a vein, it would go all throughout your body but it would stop at your brain. The blood-brain barrier is not going to let it go through. and. Um, it, it's the same way if you were to inject that dye into the brain, it will circulate in the brain, but it will not circulate to the rest of your body, and that's because that barrier. So yeah, it kind of uh, just keeps out stuff that could potentially be harmful, or just stuff that it just doesn't see as having any nutritional value, but it also protects anything that is up there from getting into your blood, especially if it knows like it's not supposed to be there. Um, like I said, when it comes to skincare journeys I don't know if allowing the glutathione to even get through that barrier and reach your brain if that is anything like we really would benefit from um, like I said just getting it to my blood system I still saw uh, benefits so I'm not even sure if this is something that even really matters um, for us I will be making a video on um, like chronic fatigue or just anything like that where people are you're sluggish it's really hard to wake up no matter how much sleep you get you're still tired and that as well as glutathione and glutathione levels because there definitely is some really interesting information on that and um, i think that could be really 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 helpful for a lot of different people it's just really up to you um for some people the matter of which glutathione to take and and how to take it it just depends on what your budget is really um, if you are on a budget it's much easier just to um, get bulk glutathione so like I don't know a couple hundred grams or so and then uh, obviously if it's reduced you're gonna have to go ahead and do the nebulizer or the rectal method um, if you have more money to spare then buying a lot of bottles of acetyl and taking five to six pills a day i mean that would help too but um yeah i wish i had more um experience with acetyl and as far as like how quick to see results um but i have heard from other people who were on acetyl uh most specifically the yaros brand 
of acetyl and uh, they said it worked pretty quick for them. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what dosage they were using because that's really 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 important because it's like okay are you taking two pills a day? Uh, are you taking four or five pills a day? Because uh, the cool thing or the glamorous thing about acetyl is it's supposed to be you can take a lower dosage so only a few milligrams a day and still get results whereas with the other types of glutathione usually you know people are taking like you know five to six thousand milligrams like I, I feel like that's like the average but for this it's like you could like take only like 300 to 600 and still see you know a change so yeah if you guys have um experience with any of this then you know share in the comments and um i'm actually getting back on my liposomal uh this is the vitamin c but liposomal uh, vitamin c and glutathione i told you guys that i would be starting in august and i didn't start in august and now we're in september so i'm gonna do it again and um i'm just bracing myself um one thing that's going to be different this time around is i'm not going to stop drinking because I don't want to stop drinking. <laughs> I don't want to give up my uh, spiked seltzers um, and you know occasional shots. So I'm not going to stop drinking. So we'll see if my liver can still keep up and actually raise my glutathione levels, or if I'm just going to be depleting as much as I take. It's just going to go out the window. Like I don't know. We're about to find out. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking it. Um, when I do take it, usually I take a few tablespoons. I'm gonna make a different video of exactly how much that is. I think last time when I was on liposomal glutathione, um, I was taking maybe around 3,000 milligrams. So I really wasn't doing anything crazy. I wasn't um, doing any high or mega doses. Obviously, if you do do mega doses, like five thousand to six thousand which that is a really really high dose even for liposomal glutathione like for reduced glutathione five to six thousand like that's like you need to at least start there like that should be your baseline and then anything higher would be like a lot a lot um, but for liposomal it's it's like a lot <laughs> a lot it's supposed to be one of those things where less is more and you get you know you can still get um cool before and afters without like really mega dosing but anyways that's all